In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Good morning, dear friends. You're very welcome here today to St. Mary's for the funeral mass of the late John Dehan, a very much loved and appreciated gentleman. I had the great honor of being called out, the sad honor of being called out to anoint John, but he had passed on at that stage. But I was very aware of a loving family gathered around him, and we thank God for them. We ask God to bless and console Kevin and Lee and Jason at this time, uh, his dear children. He was a beloved grandfather, a loving brother, an uncle, and a friend, especially to Jesse and Sean and many other people who are here. Everybody connected to John through blood, marriage, friendship, and faith. You're very, very welcome here. And any of our brothers and sisters from other denominations, I hope you're, you're as welcome here as the flowers in May. And I hope that you will uh, take part and enjoy, uh, as well as mourn with us as we think about John Dehan's lovely life and his passing. We stand before a God who loves us all so much and sees the best in every one of us and draws out the best as we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us for all our sins and bring us all unto everlasting life. And we'll say the glory now in thanksgiving for a lovely life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. 
Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Dear friends, let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, we firmly believe that your Son died and rose to life. We pray for our brother John, who has died in Christ. Raise him at the last day to share the glory of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And we ask the family members who are going to read now, if they'd like to come up now, please. reading from St. Paul to the Thessalonians, we want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them, like other people who have no hope. We believe that, they, or that Jesus died and rose again, and it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with them. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out the command, and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise. And then those of us who are still alive to be, will be taken up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. But we shall stay with the Lord forever, which is such as these. You should comfort one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures, where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me, to revive my drooping spirit. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff, with these you give me comfort. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. Alleluia, alleluia. Come, you whom my Father has blessed, says the Lord. Take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill. There he sat down and was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak and this is what he taught them. How happy are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are the gentle, they shall have the earth for their heritage. Happy those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right, for they shall be satisfied. Happy are the merciful, they shall have mercy shown to them. Happy are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Happy are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons and the daughters of God. Happy are those who are persecuted in the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Just take a wee seat now, dear friends. <clears throat> dear friends, people often talk, talk about a sudden death as a way of leaving this life that is more desirable than as the result of a long illness. And to be perfectly honest, I've prayed for this for myself. But when such an earthquake happens to a family, as it did for John's just a couple of days ago, there is invariably a tsunami of shock and grief for those who are left behind. John's dear family are at the beginning of this tsunami. And there's people in this congregation also who know all about trying to come to terms with the sudden death of a much-loved family member, or partner, or child. And yet in keeping with John's kind and welcoming nature, they have received all of us with great courtesy and kindness over the last few days. John was much loved. He was very much a family man. He was there for everybody especially his boys, grandchildren, neighbors, friends, and the extended family. John was a grandfather to 10, and he was very proud and loving towards them all. And he has been described as an easygoing, welcoming, kind, and generous person, and very big-hearted. He was also something of a chef, and renowned throughout, I'd say, the neighborhood and, and many other places for his marvelous stuffing that he made, which seemed to be a hallmark of his character. And if you were very lucky, now I was not on the receiving end of, of getting any of this stuffing, but 
apparently some people were, and it was lovely, just a lovely wee hallmark of his lovely, generous nature. He was one of 13 siblings. At 16 years of age, he joined the RAF, and he rose to the rank of corporal. Started off his life in Limavady, then Cardiff, High Wycombe, Hong Kong, and then back home to Limavady. Where his family was, there was John's heart and soul. John was a great friend to everyone, and he was blessed with great friends, such as Jesse and Sean. There have been many tears shed over the sudden passing of such a kind-hearted and warm man. He will be sorely missed, but he's left a great legacy behind him. At the end of the day, what is important in this life is our ability to love and be loved. God is love. And when we give praise as we do today for the life of a human being who was so much loved and gave love, we give praise and thanks to God who made him as he has made all of us from the dust of the earth. Now at the end of his life, we hand him back to God. May he rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we just ask the family if they'd like to offer up some prayers of the faithful. And so am I. Thank you. I'm, I'll carry on that bit. Okay. So, dear Lord, thank you so much for John's life and bless his dear family at this time. Lord, hear us. Bless all the people of this congregation who've come to mourn and give thanks for John's life and bless all of us and all belonging to us. Lord, hear us. And we pray for our own private intentions. And bless everybody, Lord, that sympathize with the family over these last few days that you'll bless them too. And we turn to our blessed lady. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make all prayers through Christ our Lord. And now we'll have the bringing up of the gifts.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Lord, receive the gifts we offer for the salvation of your friend John. May Christ be merciful in judging our brother, for he believed in Christ as his Lord and his Savior. We make all prayers through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And so with all the angels and saints we proclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying to them, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying to them, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Donal, our Bishop, all clergy and religious. Remember also our sisters and brothers who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all those who have died in your mercy, especially today your friend John. Welcome them all into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph and the Apostles, St. John and all the saints who've pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We stand now, friends, and pray in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
Peace of the Lord be with you always. Pray for each other, friends, everybody here, all belonging to us, all the people of our parish, anybody that has hurt us, maybe we've hurt them. People who find it hard to get along with, they're hard to forgive. People who find it hard to forgive us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring all of us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Lord God, your Son, Jesus Christ, gave us the sacrament of his body and blood to guide us in our pilgrim way to your kingdom. May our brother John, who shared in the Eucharist, come to the banquet of life that Christ has prepared for each one of us. We make all prayers through Christ our Lord. Sincere thanks to the family for organizing the Mass and the beautiful readings that we've had, our lovely music ministry, and uh, Tommy and Brendan and team for organizing uh, everything for us, and Frankie for getting things ready. We move on now to the final commendation and farewell. John's body will be sprinkled with holy water as a reminder when he was a wee child and he was brought for baptism, and then the body will be incensed, which is a mark of respect, and then we'll take him to his place of rest. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of John. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. For one day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you, John, take you to himself. May the angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest come unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend John, in the sure and certain hope that, together with all who've died in Christ, he will rise on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon John in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to these prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your friend John and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and John once again. In peace we take him now to his place of rest.